Today in this video, we're going to install Bind uh, to stand up a DNS server. Uh, this is still along the lines of Maz and OpenStack building the cloud, but as I was building the cloud, I realized that uh, having a DNS server local would make things a lot easier, so we would be able to resolve host names and uh, just keep track of things much easier than having to remember all these IPs. So I'm going to back up a little bit. I'm going to install a DNS server. And I just kind of wanted to walk through the install with you guys and uh, show you how it affects Maz. And there's a little tweak we have to do to Maz to get it to work correctly. But uh, let's get started. So there's oh, I found there's a lot of good guides for for Bind out there, but I found this one. Uh, it's very straightforward. We'll use it. Uh, I have a machine outside of Maz. It's not in the cloud. Uh, it's just a uh, old Dell machine. It's like a Pentium D, 512 megs of memory. Uh, I'm just going to use it for my DNS server. It's it, it's not much, but uh, good enough for DNS. It's actually got Lubuntu on it. It's a lightweight version of Ubuntu, uh, and it's the desktop version. So I can use the desktop as a GUI down here um, in a different part of the house to uh, so I don't have to carry my laptop around everywhere. But anyway, it's going to be our DNS box. So let's start out by just seeing how this thing's configured. Okay, so the, we do have. Uh, I've already come in here and set the the ETH1 interface to static. Uh, we're using a the 1.116 address. Uh, I already set this up once, but I, the DNS server will eventually be this box. Uh, but for now, I'm going to comment it out and just let it route things to the gateway. That'll that'll get us through this install. But then we'll come back and uncomment this when our server is actually stood up. So let's save this guy. So let's take a look and see how uh, what our ho let's make sure our host name is correct. And it should just be desktop. It is. So now we need to edit our hosts file. So you need to map desktop to the IP address as well as a fake domain name that we can use in our environment here. Uh, it's best to, the, again, this is the IP of the desktop machine, our, DNS, our new DNS server. Uh, it's best to use a domain name that is not routable out on the web because if you get mistakes and you, you accidentally it accidentally forwards it out to the internet, it will actually resolve it. So you don't want something that isn't resolved. That you, you can't resolve it. So I'm just going to pick BCNet, uh, and I'm going to put a CIN on the end because that's not actually used on the internet right now. Hopefully it, it never is. But uh, that'll that way we can't use it outside of our little network here. So that's good. Let's save that, close it. Okay, now let's take a peek at the guide. So we figure the interfaces. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead. This box is pretty slow. I'm gonna go ahead and reboot it. Uh, I will pause the video during it so you don't have to sit here. Okay, it's back. Let's log in again. Okay, now let's take a look at the guide. Uh, so we've set our interface. Uh, we've set the host name. So we edited the host file. So let's go ahead and install bind. It's the package is bind nine. It's only a meg, it shouldn't take very long. Let's see what our next step is. So next we will 
start editing the bind configuration files and I already have them all uh, set up over here we're just gonna paste them in and uh, it'll make things go a little quicker but I'll explain them all so bind is installed let's CD over to bind it's an ETC bind take a look and see what's there okay you want to make a directory called zones a sudo so we'll keep our zone files out there keep them separate out of this out of this uh, folder so now let's uh, start with a file here let's edit our options file first it's the easier to edit not many edits in this one so the options file you can set up ACLs uh, you can set up forwards or forwarders uh, so a forwarder is to send it up to a higher uh, DNS server so if, if this server can't look it up it'll go find it somewhere else uh, so we're gonna set those up uh, there's a, a lot most of all the options that uh, bind uses you, you can add them in here so for the first forward I'm just going to send it to the router. And then for the second two, I'm going to let Google have them. Google won't mind. So those are the two Google servers. And I've been bid by this a couple of times, this uh, DNSSEC validation. Just set this to no. Uh, we don't need it. Uh, we'll have to change it on Maz as well but it just causes a lot of problems. Set it to no for now. And exit and save. Okay, we're good. Now we also need to edit uh, the local file. Okay, not much in here, but I have this saved. Let me go grab it. We'll paste this in. Okay, so this file, this is where you actually set up the zone names and uh, the files that uh, have the zone information in them. These are both, th these are master zones. So we just have one zone. Uh, you want to set your, the DNS name that you chose, the fake DNS name in the zone. It's going to be a type master. And this is the file that we're going to create that has the zone config in it. We'll do that in a minute. Then reverse zone. Zone, you gotta be very careful. You use the correct subnet for one, but don't put the last octet of the IP in here. Put it in here backwards, but leave off the last octet. So that will resolve. Uh, so this is for reverse lookup. Uh, this is the top one is if you enter a name, it's gonna return the name with its IP. This one is if you did an NS lookup on an IP, it will do the reverse and return the name. And we're going to set that config up in this file. So that's it for this one. Let's save it. Okay, let's cd to zones and we'll create our zone files. In your configuration, to get example files. And this guide shows you how to do it here. It's they offer you, Bind offers you examples of these files and it's a good idea to copy them into the files that you're going to create. So let's do that. So copy this example file that Bind gives you into your new file. Okay, now let's edit our new file. Okay, you can see they just give you kind of a rough file here. Um, but this is what you're going to want to do, and then you can edit it how you wish. Now, I already have a file that we can use, but I just wanted to show you that here's the example file. So I'm going to get rid of all this. Okay. Uh, make sure from that example file that we just saw, make sure you put your... Uh, your new name server up here and then enter a web address 
up uh, up here. This is it doesn't matter too much. It's just it wants an email address that it can use for information. All this stuff can stay default. This is just the timings. Uh, make sure your top line is your domain name and this is a name server entry and then put your name server f fully qualified domain name in there make sure you have a period after both of these and then you add an alias a record uh, to give it its IP that's this is what tells uh, you're going straight to this server when you access this uh, domain name and then you have to populate this with all of the boxes on your network uh, starting with the gateway so it's a great idea to keep all of these IPs in number order and I'll show you why here in a second but it makes things much easier so just add an A record and the name of whatever you want to call that box it doesn't have to be the host name just whatever name you want to call it that it's going to return when it does a lookup so when you're done with that uh, the very last line make it a www C name for bcnet so that way if somebody punches in www.bcnet.cin it will still return uh, this address at this domain so that's all for this file now let's do the same thing actually I'll jump over to the guide so now we have to set up the reverse file and what do you say was it The reverse file, the example file is db127. And ours is going to be called db192. Again, copy the example over there and then you can work off of that. Okay, here's the example file. Gives you a rough list. It's basically just the opposite of the last file that we created. Remember, change your domain name. Your name, use your new name server. Give it an IP address. This, these timings are fine. Uh, and then you're going to edit this file, uh, however you see fit. Uh, it's a reverse lookup. Let's grab that. Okay. Again, we change the name server, web address. The first one has to be uh, an insert of the, the name server desktop. That's just the first, um, that, that, just kinda, that tells it where to go, what machine to go to for the desktop. Now, these are all reverse lookups. So P, these are all PTR entries. Uh, Gateway.bcnet.sin uh, is at IP address, the last octet of its IP is 1 my NAS device it's 115 my desktop what 116 uh, misserve 130 these have to be keep this is why it's important to keep these in order because it makes things much easier uh, this has to be the last octet of the IP address you used in the previous file so get all those set up and you should be good to go save this file we're done okay so now I think all we have to do is restart bind. We've set up the reverse. Okay, let's check our um, there. It provides a checker tool for these config files. So and I want to make sure I'm using it right. Okay, so you have to use it with your. Um, domain name and then just enter the file that you created okay see it checks out okay that means we've got a good file and do the same with your reverse file this just checks for syntax error okay so they're good files that's a good thing to do okay ignore this resolve comp stuff that doesn't actually exist anymore but what we are going to do is now we will go back now that the server is almost ready we're going to go back to edit our interfaces file and uncomment 
that last time. Uncomment our DNS name servers. So we'll do that. That's good. Now we're ready to restart bind and pull in the changes. And as long as he says OK, that's a that's a good sign. We didn't mess up anything too bad because at least he did start. And you can tail this this log to see what what happened in bind if he's throwing any ugly errors. No ugly errors. We're good. All right. Now do a host L. This this will tell you if he's able to resolve uh, all of the items that we loaded in those files, all of our domain entries. So do a host L on your uh, on your host name on your DNS name, and it did. It's calling all this stuff. So we're good. Now, so I can do some testing from my laptop. I'm going to change his information so that we're now going to be pointing at our brand new DNS server and I'm going to give it a static IP and just put in the DNS server that we just created. Good. Okay. Close that guy. He's going to reset all our connections and dump our servers. Okay, let's restart the our new DNS server connection. So, can we resolve? Can we do an NS lookup? Let's do this machine first. And it works, it returns the IP. Let's look up our NAS box. And it works, we're good. And now, can Windows ping Google? Let's make sure we can ping Google. It's always good to check. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can ping the DNS server from DOS. So we're good. The network change that we made, it's, it's doing lookups. Let's see if we can get the NAS box. Okay, it's bringing up the IP, so we're good. Now, there's one tweak that you have to make to your MAS server. And this is MAS. So let's CD to bind. And he has let's look. He's get bind is configured almost the same way. He's got some subfolders like MAS that uh that he uses, but we're just interested in this this options file. So let's edit that guy. There's one really small change you need to make to make your life a lot easier. Set this guy, just like we did on our DNS box, set it to no because he starts looking for keys and trying to, to validate that security and it's just a hassle. Set it to no. Forget about it. We're good. Now, uh, restart bind on this box as well after you make that change. Just had it somewhere. There we go. Uh, anytime you make changes to those files, you need to restart bind. Okay, we're good. Now, with that set, we should be able to look up things on the other network. Uh, NAS. And there it is. So he can look things up both directions now. That's good. Uh, there are a few things in the GUI that you need to pay attention to. So 
let me just show you this. So now that um, the DNS server has been set up, we can access it from our domain name now. So that's good. Uh, on the settings page, go in here, make sure this is set up as forwarders. Uh, you need to do that before uh, anything will really work. Make sure it's set to your new DNS server. And so that way anything that you look up over here will get forwarded. That's how that worked. It will get forwarded over to that address, over to the new DNS server. Because this box only has this as a DNS server. So that's good. Now, uh, there's one more spot in here in networks. If you go into the ETH0 interface, make sure his DNS server is now that new server as well. So that's really all the new configuration that needs to be done for MAS. And that's pretty much it. Now we have a DNS box uh, and we can do our lookups uh, via the names instead of using the IPs all the time. I think that's it for the guide as well. This is just a bunch of test info. Yep, we're all set. DNS is set up, ready to go. Uh, the next video I'll do is uh, just kind of a sum up of changes that I'm going to make now that we have DNS instead. It's very, there's very few. You can still do it the same way we did in the other videos with the IP, but if you want to do DNS, set up a server, you can do it this way as well. So, thanks for watching.